All right, I want to bring in Richard Johnson now, who's a lecturer in US politics at Queen Mary University of London. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. So, Prime Minister Johnson's parties at 10 Downing Street are now under police investigation due to potential breaches of COVID-19 regulations that, of course, were in force at the time. So how bad could this be for the Prime Minister, considering this is potentially criminal? You know, Rosemary, I was on this program over some years about the process for removing the President of the United States. Now, here we're having a discussion about removal of the British Prime Minister. Here's how the processes are fundamentally similar. In both instances, the fate of the President and the Prime Minister lies with the majority of their legislators. So for, uh, for Donald Trump, if he had a majority support of Republicans in the Senate, he was safe. If Boris Johnson can continue to maintain support from at least half of his conservative MPs in the House of Commons, he's safe. The process for removing him is through a vote of no confidence in his leadership. That takes 15 percent, one five of conservative MPs to get to that process. If I were Boris Johnson, I would have wanted that process to begin yesterday. Why? Because if more bad news is coming, that report has lots of bad things in it, it's not going to look good, then I would have wanted that vote to take place earlier. Why? Because if the British Prime Minister survives that vote of no confidence, then he has 12 months of freedom. They cannot call another vote of no confidence in him for 12 months. This bind for time strategy, I don't understand why the Prime Minister is doing it, unless he thinks somehow he's going to be vindicated. But this, this latest news about Sue Gray's report being referred on to uh, Scotland Yard uh, is not very promising in that respect. Right. And of course, as you point out, we are waiting for the release of the findings into that inquiry, into the series of parties. Of course, we don't know if that's going to be delayed as a result of the police now investigating this. But lawmakers say they will make a decision on Boris Johnson's future once they see the findings of that report. But it, it isn't independent. So what is its true value and reliability when you consider that? A lot of it depends on the political ramification of this. You know, the Conservative Party now is polling at, uh, at, at very historic lows for the Conservative Party. This is making Conservative MPs jittery. Boris Johnson won a very substantial majority in 2019 in places where the Conservatives don't normally win seats. Those MPs now must feel very vulnerable. So in some ways, uh, the, the, the effect of the content of the report is what it means for the, the mood among Conservative MPs. Do they feel that Boris Johnson has turned from an electoral asset to an electoral uh, liability? And that report, plus the manoeuvring of the Labour leader, Keir Starmer, are all building to a crescendo where that vote of no confidence will take place. I, I, I predict uh, in the Prime Minister, the question is, can he keep half of his members on side. Yeah, I mean, that is the big question, because on top of all of this, Boris Johnson is sinking in the polls. The British public are furious about uh, reports of boozy parties at Downing Street, while everyone else suffered under the hardship uh, of lockdowns. The next elec election, of course, isn't until 2024. So would the Tories wait and hope that voters forget, because people do forget, or would they force him out, do you think? I mean, I mean it's difficult to predict this, but uh, you probably have an inside to all of this. What's the sense? Um, in the British system, uh, an early election could, could happen, but the, the Conservatives could wait it out. Uh, I, would, I would say the Conservatives do not want an election now uh, or any time soon. This, at the moment, reminds me in some ways of the expenses scandal of 2008-2009. Uh, in both of those instances, the infractions themselves were relatively minor in the grand scheme of political scandals, but there was a sense that there was one rule for, uh, for the elected and there was another rule that everyone else followed. And I think that British public don't like hypocrisy. They don't like people who are chancing the rules, um, who are, are living it up on the expense of others. And I think that this, you know, the series of revelations that have come out, not least uh, the one about the parties in Downing Street on the eve of Prince Philip's funeral have struck a chord with the British public. Uh, and, and I think that 
it is now getting very serious for the Prime Minister. He can still survive yeah. because it comes down to his own MPs to keep him in uh, for now. Uh, but I would say that the, day by day, things are looking bleaker and bleaker for Boris Johnson. Yeah, comes down to trust, doesn't it? And these leaks keep uh, continuing. Richard Johnson, many thanks for joining us. Appreciate your analysis. Thanks. Well, still to come, as the Winter Games draw near, China is facing the...